Yes. Lesson 5-6 introduces us to law of cosines. Okay. When we talk about law of cosines, we still have our angle ABC, our sides ABC, and we have a totally different equation. Okay. So our equation. Now, I'm actually going to write two more versions of this equation out, but this is one basic version. Okay where a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of angle a. Everyone got that change, yes? Okay, this is law of cosines. It does use cosine in the law. Now, the key with this is a squared, which is what starts it, is the angle that is in that particular version of the problem. b squared and c squared are also multiplied right here with 2 times b times c times cosine of a. Generally speaking, like you become experienced, this is what you need to know one of them. You just fill in the idea. Kind of like today when I was going over examples with law of sines, sine of a over a. I kind of quit writing that, didn't I? Sine of b over b. It's more we're looking for pairs. And you'll get in that habit here as well. But if we write the other two out, you guys are beginners, right? So if I write the other two out, there is a version that starts b squared. And if it starts b squared, my other two sides are going to be a squared plus c squared minus, instead of 2 times bc, it's going to be 2 times ac times the cosine of angle b. Are you seeing how the connections work here? And then obviously there's a third version of this we can write out. And that is the version that starts with c squared, little c squared. Then the two squareds added on the other side are going to be a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, the ones we just wrote, times cosine of angle c. So good. I feel like you guys are kind of following the connections there because... Yes, this is going to be provided, but you need to become familiar with it. Now, a couple of things to talk about here. And one of these, key important fact, I don't know if we'll get to it today or tomorrow, but in any triangle, for a triangle to physically exist, the two smaller sides must add to be bigger than the third side. Okay, so when you look at a triangle, you're given here are three sides of a triangle. Two smaller sides must add to be bigger than the third side. Otherwise, that triangle can't exist. And if you start, you know, if you start, you know, I'm going to erase this, but here's my long side. If I have one small side and one small side, but those two sides don't add to be longer than this side, they're not going to connect. They're not going to physically become a triangle. And so that is one of those things we're going to have to check. Kind of like on the law of signs yesterday when the trick was um, if it's an obtuse angle, the longest side has to be across from that obtuse angle. Similar trick here. Okay? So just tuck that away in your mind. And then when solving the triangle with law of cosines, we are specifically looking at triangles that are provided in the side angle side setup or side side side. Okay. Um, key with solving law of cosine problems is to find smallest angles first. So we need to find smallest angles first. Smallest angles are going to be across from the smallest sides, right? Again, lock that into mind. And I will say, there are some problems where if you don't find the smallest angle first, you'll survive. It'll be fine. But then there are other problems when there's an obtuse angle that if you don't find that smallest angle first, you will get the entire tri triangle wrong. Okay? And this has to do with when I just plug cosine into my calculator, it's just going to give me the acute angle. It's not going to give me an obtuse angle. It's just going to give me the quadrant one angle. So if it's supposed to be something outside of quadrant one, we're going to have to get that by making it the final angle we find and subtracting from 180. Okay? So those are the sets of information you have to keep into mind. Let's see if we can uh, 
definitely get through the first one here. So solving triangle ABC, given side A is 11, side B is 5, and angle C is 20 degrees. Now, um, let's see, do I want to draw a little triangle in here? Yeah, I have one drawn in my notes. These problems do take a little bit of workspace, especially while we're learning. So angle C, I'm putting here is 20 degrees. Notice I don't know what's across from it, do I? So I don't know side C. I have side B is 5, which I'm going to make this one. And I have side A is 11. My A and B placement were just based on how my triangle was drawn. Okay. What kind of setup is this? This is a side angle side provided, right? And that verifies. Okay. So we know little a, little b, and we know big C. Which version of the angle must we, or the equation must we use up there? And here's my sin. Hint, we know big C, so we're going to have to use the equation that starts with little c. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to start, we're beginners, I'm going to write out my basic equation. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. You may get to the point where you don't have to write that, write that out. And now I'm going to fill it in. Let's see, c squared, I don't know, a squared, 11 squared, plus b squared, 5 squared, minus 2, times a, which is 11, times b, which is 5, times cosine of 20 degrees. That is purely just filling in the information. Now, you have to be smarter than the problem. We have to pay attention to things like order of operations. Okay? Just FYI. Let's do some math. What's 11 squared? 5 squared? 2 times 11 times 5. So my problem now reads C squared is 121 plus 25 minus 110 cosine of 20. Well, okay. What can I clean up here? Do the 110 cosine 20. I'm not going to do that until I'm ready to put a final answer to my calculator. Because that's going, cosine 20 is going to give me a decimal. Yeah. I don't want to write a big decimal. 121 plus 25. Those can add, yes. And get 146. Can I subtract the 110? No. No, because it's multiplied by cosine 20, right? which I know, Kyla, it's why you were wanting to do that, because it's multiplying, but this all comes down to, I'm going to put it in the calculator here in a moment. What do I need to solve for C? If it's C squared, we're going to take the square root. So this is going to be the square root of 146 minus 110 cosine of 20 degrees. I didn't put plus or minus. Why did I not put plus or minus? Yeah, you can't have a negative sign. And I guess I could have, I just looked at my notes, and I went ahead and computed the C squared and then did the square root. What are we getting as an answer? 6.5. 6.5? Okay. We know side C. What are we going to find next? How do you find angles? How do we find angles? We're going to have to use law of cosines still. Okay. And that's why, for the most part, I want us to stick with using law of cosines. Okay. Don't, we'll talk about that more tomorrow, don't go back and try and regress to law of sines. I want us to focus on law of cosines. 
Yeah. Since we have A, B, and C, yes, we're going to have to use that rounded version, guys. We can't get away from it. We can't get around it. But we can find either angle A or B by using one of our law of cosines. Which one should I do first? Yeah. Which one? I want to do B because it's the smallest angle. And angle. Which angle is going to be smaller, A or B? B. B. So what must I find first? B. B. Because if A ends up being obtuse, you're going to get it wrong if you find A now. And A does end up being obtuse on this problem. So we're going to find B next because it's the smaller one. And so that's going to be using the B squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. And I had hoped to finish this problem, but we will start with that tomorrow and learn how to find b. I thought I had a few more minutes, yeah. Is that clock slow up there?